Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here and I welcome you to this very snowy day where we are going to be talking about what might be the downfall of Jeep as a brand. They are absolutely struggling right now. Almost every other automaker has seen massive gains in market share and sales volume over the course of the first quarter of 2023. And while well, Jeep has seen the opposite, their sales have declined by over 20%. But before we get in this video, I do need to give a shout out and thank you to the Larry H. Miller Dodge Ram Jeep Chrysler here in Provo. Now they do not endorse or approve of this video whatsoever, but I am filming this video on their lot, so I will give them a shout out. I'll include a link to their inventory in the description down below as well. And anyways, with that being said, oh, also, carbine guide in the description down below as well. But anyways, let's get into this Jeep video. Let's start things off by going over these sales figures. So like I said at the beginning of the video, most automakers have seen their volume increase year over year from quarter one of 2022 to quarter one of 2023. The average increase has been anywhere from like 5% to 20 to 25% depending on the automaker, which is fantastic. Again, most automakers are selling more cars today than they did the same time last year. Jeep, on the other hand, is selling significantly fewer cars. They've had a decline of over 20%, like I said at the beginning of the video. In quarter one of 2022, Jeep sold almost 200,000 vehicles, 193,000 to be exact. In quarter one of 2023, Jeep sold 153,000 vehicles, a reduction of about 40 thousand units and 20 percent so most automakers are currently seeing a market that is becoming more favorable for them whereas jeep is seeing a market that is contracting for them so why is jeep struggling when everyone else is well seemingly succeeding well the first thing that needs to be mentioned is the fact that jeep is part of an automotive group that is well frankly struggling to sell cars the automotive group is known as stellantis and currently they are down by over 10 percent in terms of sales volume the only other manufacturing group that is currently down in terms of sales volume is the toyota motor company and the reason why toyota is down in sales i made a video about this but the gist of that video is because toyota can't build cars if toyota could build more cars they would sell more cars whereas on the other hand the brands that are under the Stellantis umbrella are not selling cars not because they're not building them because there's plenty of availability with the vehicles it's because people simply aren't buying the vehicles so let's start things off with one of Jeep's cooler vehicles. This is the Gladiator. Now I just made a dedicated video talking about why the Gladiator is struggling when it comes to sales. So I'm not gonna be repeating too much in this video. Basically the gist is that this is a mid-size pickup truck, but it's a convertible mid-size pickup truck that's oriented towards off-roading. And there's a few faults with the Gladiator. First off, it's way more expensive than every other mid-size pickup truck, which would be fine if it offered more performance and more excitement. And it does offer more excitement in the fact that it's really good off-roading. It's a convertible but it doesn't offer the more performance side of things and so it's really expensive not as practical as a mid-size pickup other mid-size pickup trucks and it also has a pretty small bed for a mid-size pickup truck so again that also kind of <laughs> decreases the practicality and so that's the first vehicle and uh note on the affordability aspect i almost forgot to show the price in the gladiator so this is a 2023 mojave uh, it looks like it's got a cloth interior sixty-three thousand dollars for the price now the next one is the Wrangler. This is Jeep's convertible SUV. And these are actually still selling quite well unless they're four by E's. The four by E's are actually kind of struggling to sell right now. Um, but this right here is a four by E four door Rubicon. $66,000 is the MSRP for it. And got a cloth interior with that one. So the thing with the Wrangler is, you know, Jeep can frankly get a price premium out of this vehicle because of the buyer base that buys this type of vehicle. There's not a lot of other vehicles out there like it. Like this has the Bronco that's its competition and that's pretty much it. Um, but again, $66,000 for that thing. Now the next vehicle is the Jeep Cherokee. And this is a vehicle that Jeep is actually discontinuing, which I think is sad because this is actually a really good affordable vehicle from Jeep. And if we actually take a look at the sticker price here, that'll show it. So this one's $39,000 for a Latitude. It's got like a nice interior. Um, and it's just a little bit smaller than the Grand Cherokee. And so I think that Jeep getting rid of one of their affordable, ve affordable vehicles kind of shows the direction that they're going into. Now the next one is the new Jeep Compass. Jeep just recently redesigned this and I think the redesign is really good. But what you notice is this Trailhawk right here, $44,000. It does have a very nice interior, but $44,000. And this is smaller than that Cherokee. So, yeah. Now the next vehicle is Jeep's most affordable vehicle and that is the Renegade. It's a small crossover that's actually built on the same platform as a Fiat. This one's actually a 2022. $31,000 is the MSRP on that. So again, a more affordable vehicle by Jeep, but there's a chance that they might be getting rid of the Renegade too. 
And well, that leads us to Jeep's bread and butter, and that is the Grand Cherokee. This is by far the most popular vehicle with Jeep. Obviously, the Wrangler and the Grand Cherokee sometimes trade in terms of popularity, but they're both really popular. This one is a Laredo L, $47,000 for the MSRP on that. And then you guys can see the other models. And just like the Wrangler, the ones that have the hybrid powertrain seem to be struggling to sell more than the ones that don't. You guys can see those are all hybrids there at the end. Um, but regardless, that's like a base model, almost $50,000 for a base model Grand Cherokee. The loaded up ones can be in excess of like over $80,000. And that affordability aspect, I think, is a huge problem for Jeep currently because, like I stated earlier in the video, it looks like they're getting rid of a lot of their affordable models. And the models that they still have that are currently affordable, like the Compass, they're making them a lot less affordable. I mean, a loaded up Compass is as expensive as a base model Grand Cherokee, which I understand you're going to get more options and more features, right, in the loaded up Compass than you're going to get in the base model Grand Cherokee. But still, the whole point of the Compass was supposed to be an affordable vehicle, and it's gotten to the point where it's not really an affordable vehicle anymore. And I think that this is the biggest problem with Jeep as a brand, is that they aren't really focused on building affordable vehicles anymore. And you know, not building affordable vehicles isn't the biggest problem because there are plenty of brands that don't build affordable vehicles. Like look at, you know, BMW, Audi, Mercedes, for example, right? Luxury car brands that build more expensive luxury vehicles. But the problem is when a brand's brand identity is associated with certain things and then the vehicles that they build are different things and that's where this whole affordability thing kind of gets tied in. So I want you guys to comment down below what you think of when you think of Jeep. And I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of comments of people saying that they think of a lack of reliability. And you know what? Fair enough, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. But when I think of Jeep as a brand, I think of off-road, I think of ruggedness, and frankly, I actually think of reliability because my grandparents happened to own a couple of Jeep Cherokees that were from the 1990s, and those things were like bulletproof. They had hundreds of thousands of miles on them, and I mean, those things were just able to take such a big beating. They lived in the like middle of nowhere, West Virginia, that's where they retired, and that's actually why they bought those Jeeps, is because they knew that they were gonna be great in the snow, they knew that they could deal with off-road conditions, which they were gonna have to encounter all the time where they were retiring. And so again, that's what I associate with Jeep. Ruggedness, off-road ability, and reliability. And if we take a look at modern Jeeps, well, I think the Gladiator definitely represents ruggedness, off-road ability, and reliability if you get it with the 3.6 liter V6. And same thing with the Wrangler if you don't get it with the 4xE powertrain. The 4xE has definitely been some stuff. But when we pop over to the Grand Cherokee, this is a big volume seller for Jeep, right? Or it's supposed to be. And it doesn't seem like it represents what at least I think of when I think of Jeep. Because this, like, you look at this. Look at those big luxury wheels. And look at the interior here. Like, you have this crazy upscale luxury interior. And so it seems like this vehicle is more focused on luxury, opulence, appearance. I don't see any ruggedness. I don't see any, like, off-roadiness. Like, yes, it still has a two-speed transfer case. And yes, these Grand Cherokees can come with air suspension to give them more ground clearance, right? It, it can come with stuff to make it so it's more capable when it comes to off-roading. But at the same time, that's not what it looks like. And this leads me back to that reliability topic. So Jeep just isn't perceived as reliable anymore. And frankly, the ratings support this. So this rating comes from Consumer Reports. You can either agree or disagree with Consumer Reports in terms of their rating, but they currently rate Jeep as the second most unreliable brand that you can purchase today. That is correct. The most unreliable brand, according to Consumer Reports, is Mercedes-Benz. If you're wondering, the most reliable brand is Toyota and Lexus. And so that means that brands like Ford and General Motors that constantly have recalls and problems and brands like, I don't know, Mitsubishi, for example, those brands all have a better reliability score than Jeep does. So we can finally now answer the question of the video. Why is Jeep struggling to sell vehicles when pretty much every single other automaker has seen a huge increase in sales volume? And I think it comes down to a few points. So first off, price point is a big thing. Brand new Jeeps are just too expensive at this point. Jeep increased their prices by just a <laughs> margin that was too large for the market to support. And the reason why Jeep has increased their prices by so much is because of a lack of, av of availability with product from other automakers and because 
because Jeep is trying to rebrand themselves as a luxury automaker. Look at the Grand Cherokee. Look at the new Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. You can tell that Jeep is trying to become like Range Rover. Frankly, Jeep is copying Range Rover in a lot of ways. They've got air suspension now. I mean, you look at the styling on the new Grand Cherokee and on the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. Again, they look kind of like Range Rovers at this point. But what Jeep has to understand is the general public does not perceive Jeep as a luxury brand. They can make luxury packages on their vehicles, but at the end of the day, people perceive Jeep in the same light that they perceive Ford and, you know, brands from General Motors like Chevy and GMC. They're just, you know, regular car brands, not luxury car brands. And so trying to charge luxury car prices for a car that is not perceived as a luxury car, it's just not going to work. And again, the sales decline that we have been seeing supports that. But on top of that, Jeep trying to pivot towards the luxury side just doesn't make sense because, again, that's just not with their brand image. Their brand image is ruggedness, off-roadiness, and then reliability. And so I think that Jeep needs to pivot back to that brand image. They need to focus on building super capable off-road vehicles that you can also drive on-road because that is what has sold really well with Jeep for decades at this point. Look at the Wrangler, right? The Wrangler has continued to sell really well for a really long time. And look at the old Grand Cherokees and the old Cherokees. Those used to sell way better than they sell today. And again, it was because they were more focused on being rugged, off-roady, and reliable as well. And so I believe that if Jeep pivots back towards what their brand was all about back in the day, then not only would they sell more vehicles, but they would have much happier customers. But maybe that's not what Jeep cares about because their parent company, Stellantis, seems to be so focused on profitability with their companies and not focused on like the brand image and you know the vehicles themselves that, again, they're, they're kind of losing the heart of some of their companies. Let me know what you think Jeep should do to improve their sales. Or do you think that this is a, a non-issue? Do you think that as long as Stellantis is making money, that's all that matters? Because again, Stellantis did make more money last year than they did the year prior. And I'm sure this year, because of the price increases, they'll probably make more money. But I mean, it's going to get to a point where they're going to start selling so few vehicles that you know, it's one of those positive feedback loops. But regardless, let me know what you'd like to see from Jeep. I'll see ya.